So they give us z is cosine 75 degrees plus i sine 75 degrees. And a lot of times I like to shorten this. Uh, cosine plus i sine is just, it's easier to write just sis, right? It, some teachers don't like it, but it is commonly accepted. You've got cosine, i, sine, and then the angle is 75. So that notation means that. And there's no um, coefficient in the front there, so it's just a 1 out here. And if we're matching this up to kind of a standard form of r, cis, theta, we can see that the radius, if we were to graph this ordered pair, I'm sorry, not this ordered pair, if we were to graph this complex number, the radius would be 1 and the angle would be 75. Now just for kicks, we can graph this original one, um, the real and imaginary axis, and it says that the angle would be um, 75 degrees and uh, the radius would be a 1. Um, 75 degrees and 1. But they don't want to know where that is, the original is, they want to know where z cubed is. And for that, we need de Moivre's theorem. Sorry about my French. I looked it up, and it's hard to say. But we'll go with de Moivre's. Yeah. And his theorem says that if you want to raise any complex number to a power, you take the original radius and raise it, raise it to that power, and then you just multiply the angle by the power. So easy enough. The radius here was a 1. We're going to cube it. And the original angle was 75. We're just going to multiply that by n. 75 times 3. Oh my god, the hardest part. Um, 225? Yes. So now we see that z cubed has a radius of 1 and an angle of 225. Well, an angle of 225 puts us in the third quadrant, uh, 180 plus 45 more, with the radius of 1. And so we just look at our choices, and the only choice that is in that third quadrant, about 45 degrees, we said that was, looks like it's going to be deep.